Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another episode of the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Well, I've been putting on my sweater in the basement here because it's getting a lot colder. And while I was doing that, I was thinking that uh, if we want to send items to Nady's Garage, we're going to have to ship them over there from the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Warehouse. And in order to do that, we're going to need something to put these items on so that we can load it up with our forklift, put it on one of the big rigs of our company, and then send it out to Nady's Garage. So in order to do that, we're going to need shipping pallets. So on today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this amazing little shipping pallet in 124th scale using popsicle sticks and some balsa wood. So without any further delay, let's go down to the bench and I will show you how I made this amazing little pallet. Before we begin building our project, we actually need a plan or a diagram of what the pallet actually looks like and some measurements. Luckily, I work at a grocery store when I'm not at the hobby shop and we get a lot of pallets every day, like multiple amounts, maybe over 20. And each of the pallets is stocked up like this, and we have to pull them apart and get your groceries out on the shelf and everything like that. Now, on some of the boxes that come on the pallets, they have this nice stacking order for how their item is supposed to be put on the pallets. And I cut one of these off of one of the boxes because afterwards we just recycle the cardboard. But look at this. You have the measurements for the pallet, 40 inches one way and 48 the other. And then a little bit of a three-dimensional sketch down here where you can see the pallet at the bottom and all the crates stacked on top. And here it says rotate second tier from top 180 degrees. So if you're building a model and you actually want it piled up, you first put down the boxes in one order and then rotate the top ones 180 degrees so that they will keep the bottom ones locked in place. It's almost like bricks, right? So anyway, we have two dimensions. 40 inches and 48. So now we want to reduce these dimensions into something that's scalable for our Natey figure. And she was molded in 124th scale, and the garage is about 125th, 124th. They just throw that those two scales around a little bit, just to make ease of convenience of building things a lot better. So 48 is easily divided into 24. So if we get out our calculator here and turn it on, you can see our numbers there. So you take 48 and you divide that into the scale you want, which is 24th scale, and you'll get 2 inches, which makes sense. if You, you don't even need the calculator for that. Just take 48 and divide it by 2. Or 24, pardon me. But 40 is a little bit of a trick. So what do we have? We get 40, and you divide that by 24. You get 1.666 repeating. So what is that in a measurement? Here we have our decimal equivalence table from my uncle's Dykes Encyclopedia. And you can see the measures in inches on the one side and then their decimal locations on the other. So our number for that 40 was 1.666 repeating. So if we look down here, now 1.66 would be an inch 0.66. So we don't really need the inch part of the measurement but we just need that decimal place. So if we go down here, you got like 0 0.1, and at the bottom you got 0.4. So we need to be over on this side, and we need to find 0.66. So there isn't a 0.66, because you got 0.65625, and then right underneath you got 0.6718. So I will just go to the closest one, which looks like 21 30 seconds. Therefore, our pallet on the 40 inch side, scaled down to 24 scale, would be 1 inch and 21 30 seconds. Now that we have a sense of the measurements for our pallet in 124 scale, we need some simple tools in order to start working on our pallet. So first off, we have a regular page of lined paper here. I've got a pencil with an eraser on the end, and I also have an old Staedtler eraser, just in case we need to uh, correct any little mistakes we have. And here's something that Pete can relate to. I have a Sterling set. This is the mathematical instruments that was made in England. Now this set came from my aunt, and I do believe it is from about 1937 or maybe 1941. It's basically pre-World War II. 
And it's quite a neat little set, actually. So it's got this little metal release on the end. And it's got this little swing-up thing for your, uh, for your compass there. There is a little bit of an issue with that <laughs> part of the hinge. But take a look at these. Made in England out of a material called Validium. And it's got metric on one side and imperial on the other. And really cool stuff. So you got your triangle there. Of course, you've got your your half circle. Now, there is an extra one put in here, which is kind of interesting. So I don't know which one was actually from the set. Probably this one. But the plastic is interesting because it's not like the new type of plastic for these sets. It's a little bit warped <laughs> and thin. So Validium, that's... I don't know what that plastic really is, like composition. It's kind of gone a bit yellow, I guess, or maybe it was yellow to begin with. And then here we've got our little ruler. So nice little bit of antiquity for uh, school sets. But the piece we actually want to have is the 45 degree triangle. So what we will do get our paper. Now I have another little tool here. This is my little scale that I got when I was a quality inspector. And the reason why we have that is because we need to find 21 30 seconds. Now this little ruler is in 60 fourths. So it has an inch right there. It's also got metric down below. So you got metric and 60 fourths of an inch. So we have our one inch here. And now you would think, okay, 21, 30 seconds. So there's a 24 right there. So you would slide the edge here to 21. But that's awfully narrow considering the other side of the pallet is two inches. So you would have that and that, which is just wrong. So then I had to remember that this is in 64th. So 32nd ends up being... Uh, somewhere in the 40s, because you have to double a 32nd. So, if I just bring over the little pallet that I've already built, I'm going to build... This is my second pallet I'm showing you how to build. So, I kind of did a little bit of a off-screen build-through. So, what I have here looks to be... Uh, an inch and about 43... 64ths, something to that effect. So what we need to do is just draw this all out using our uh, <laughs> our geometry set stuff here, our mathematical instrument set, I guess, and uh, come up with the scaled down version of what the palette should look like. So here we have our 124 scale shipping pallet template, which I reduced the sizes down to 124 scale from our little box top blueprint of our actual real life pallet. So these are the new sizes. So we have one inch and 21 30 seconds going this way and two inches going across the bottom, which correlates with our 40 inches on the one end and 48 along the bottom. So, what we have now is just a simple rectangle for our shipping pallet, and we will use this to lay out our balsa wood and our um, little popsicle sticks. That's the word I'm looking for. We use this template to lay those down so we get our measurements accurate. So here I've gathered all the tools that we're going to need in order to construct our pallet. First off, I've got a cutting board where we're going to cut out all our pieces on. I also have some DuraPro Carpenter's Glue. Now you could use any kind of Carpenter's Glue or a white glue. You can also use Crazy Glue if you want to do this in a hurry. I have the Zuron side cutters. I have an Excel hobby knife with the number 16 blade armed in it. I have a stiffer 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to be using our knife along the edge. And I don't want to do that on my aunt's old one from the 30s because I might cut that Validium plastic. It is very thin. It's like paper thin. I also have two popsicle sticks here, which will be our top boards for the pallet. I have our gauge again. I've got this sanding block, which is MDF with some sandpaper glued on the top of it, cut at a nice rectangle with 45 degree angles on it. 
I have a little bucket of balsa wood scraps, and from that bucket I was able to pull out this little piece of, I do believe that's one eighth of an inch balsa wood thick, one eighth of an inch thick. Now you can get this on a sheet from your local hobby shop, and I also have our template right here, which I will be laying out all the little cut pieces on. Now I'm going to use some balsa wood here for the edges and the center brace of our palette, but you could use the popsicle sticks as well if you really wanted to. They're just a little bit narrower than the balsa wood as far as thickness goes. The balsa is a bit thicker, which might be a little more accurate, but if you're in a pinch and you don't want to run out and buy balsa wood, just use the popsicle sticks instead. So what we have here is a piece of balsa wood cut to exactly two inches. And that's how we can do it on our template. You would just take a longer piece, let's say, and uh, hold it down, of course, and mark where it meets. So there is your two inches right there. And then you would cut it off using your hobby knife or the Zeron side cutters. Now another thing we want to do is get the thickness for the beams that are going to go across here. And that I determined to be approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now I kind of got that by figuring that these pallet boards are probably cut from 3 by 1s. Uh, so three inches wide by one inch thick. So it's something like three sixteenths. So basically you would take three sixteenths on your popsicle stick and measure it out. Now I can't really tell if that's exactly three sixteenths because I'm quite a bit away away from the camera, but this is just to give a rough idea. So you would take your stiffer edge here and connect your two little points, draw a line across, and then with your hobby knife you would just go along that line a bunch of times till you cut through the wood and then you're left with your little boards which would be about that thickness. Here we have our two side rails of our palette. Now I haven't included the center one yet because first we need to glue the slats across the top and adding the center one at this point will just make it a little bit difficult to do that. Here are the popsicle sticks cut in half, and you'll notice that they have these strands sticking out of them. Now you can leave these on here or clip them down a little bit, leave them rough, because that's how these pallets are. They're overworked so much. They're not like a, a finished work of art in any way, shape, or form. So there are rough edges on them. But what we want to do is move these side rails out of the way for a minute. And like I was saying before, mark off where they are with a line based on the template. And then you can use your side cutters and just clip off the edges. Okay, so here's the first slat marked out. Now I'm going to take my cutters, making sure I'm at that nice 45 degree angle and put a finger behind there so that doesn't go flying. Cut the one off. Then maybe I'll turn this over this way. And then we'll get that 45 degree angle again. Okay, just maneuver it into place. Looks about right. Ooh, <laughs> and there goes that. As you can see, this really fired off into the other end. So there's our first slat and it's got a little bit of the rough edge so what you could do is just take your sanding block if you want just sand this a little nice right here a little bit off the edges just to smooth that out and you can also uh, sand off these little bits little burrs or whatever you want to call them and just make that edge nice it's all up to you and your level here remember these pallets are a working item so over time they will break boards and uh, chip on the edges and all the rest. It's not a beautiful artwork like a, a wonderful cabinet or something like that. This is basically garbage wood built on a garbage frame 
to ship around items and then later on be thrown out or broken up, used as firewood, whatever. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to resemble what we're going for, which is a pallet. Next, I want to build the actual frame of our pallet. So here I have my two side rails, and I also have my slats over here. There's some of the glue on a piece of scrap cardboard, and I also have a throwaway piece of balsa wood, which I won't be using for anything. And I'm going to use this little throwaway to get a bit of glue on here and apply it to our boards and to our slats to glue this together. The other thing I have is our sanding block, and the reason why I have this is not to sand, but because that is a wonderful 45 degree solid angle, and I can correct my uh, palette here, make sure it's all nice and square, by maneuvering the edge around the boards and uh, getting it perfectly square once I glue the, um, the slats onto the top. So I can use my sanding block basically to square this up. All right, so let's try to glue this together. So I will get a bit of glue on here just something like this, and then I can put it onto the end of the balsa wood here on this side. So just a little bit there. Basically, I'm eyeballing this to make sure it is the width of the slat. So then I can just put the slat on there, connecting it to our glue blobs. And as you can see now, I'm starting to move this off out of the way of our drawing. And uh, that's where that, that MDF sanding block will come in perfectly to align this up. So now we'll just put a little bit of glue here. And there. And then we can glue this on here and here. Now it does get a little bit finicky, as Pete might say, or fidgety or something. <laughs> so what we want to do is try to get this straight and move our little slats to the ends of the runners. And yeah, this is where it really gets off angle. So. I'm going to correct this because I can't see with the way I've got this set up if I'm on these lines or not and if it's all square. So I will do this off camera. Now, once I do get it squared up, I'm going to let these sit for a little while so that it strengthens up the edges before I start applying the slats down the middle and then the center cross brace below. Here I've squared up our frame and the glue is drying so this should be quite a bit solid now and I've cut six more slats for our pallets and again these are popsicle sticks and the one nice thing about popsicle sticks is depending on whatever color the popsicle was it will stain the stick. So here you can see it's a little bit purple on the ends that might have been from maybe a grape popsicle I can't remember but fudgicles will actually stain them with a nice brown stain. So you don't really need to stain your palette afterwards with like some of the, uh, you know, acrylic stains or whatever. You can actually just have it stained from whatever the popsicle was in the first place. So now we can get back into gluing these sticks on. Now our glue is getting a little bit stiffer over there, but that's okay. So what I'll do here is I'll add a little glue onto our runners and now this can move off of the template a little bit which is okay and we will space this down so let's just drop that there now let's glue them all on and let's just Run a bead of glue here. That should, should be well for it to dry, actually, so that's good. See, this is where, uh, if you use crazy glue, you can't really do this. So I would recommend, actually, white glue or the carpenter's glue. And now we can lay our slats down.
Now I'm just doing a rough layout. I'm not worrying about spacing just yet. Okay, so here we are. So that's just a rough layout. Now what we want to do is we want to get these spaced evenly. So I can move my glue out of here so I don't stick my finger in it while I'm doing this. <laughs> now I've got our number 16 hobby blade. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not going to actually measure how, how to get it. So we just want to maneuver all these slats around so they look nice and evenly spaced. Now one thing that I have noticed with some of the work palettes is they're not quite spaced. Not all of them are spaced out like this. Some of them actually have these slats uh, pinched together at the ends. So it's almost like, well, like this, really. And then the rest of these slats are spaced out with a different spacing, but basically even apart. So on both ends, it would have these slats pushed, you know, up close together. But for mine, I don't really want that, that kind of look. Maybe on a different one, because remember, all these palettes are different. But for our demo, I want to recreate what I did the first time around on my test build. So basically, it's a little bit of a nervous hand there. Basically, it's like this. Actually, I think I need to move these guys down this way a little bit. There we go. And there, that makes a nice little, little palette, nice little uh, spacing on there for a grill or whatever, however you want to put this. Another thing we can do is once the glue is dry, you can take your sanding block and going this way, just sand down on those edges just to get all these little boards, uh, you know, nice and level at the ends. And another thing you can do is use that eraser just drop it on the palette, and that way the weight of the eraser will squish all these little uh, boards down and leave them nice and flat on the sides of the palette when it's gluing up. Once the glue is dry, of course, get rid of your eraser. And then once the glue is dry, we're going to add in the center beam, and I'm going to take some thinner balsa wood and put it on the bottoms going this way, <laughs> up and down once you turn it over. So that way you get this underneath. And I'll need three of these little boards and we'll get into that once this glue dries under the eraser. So now after a bit of time we can remove this eraser and turn over our palette. And there we have all these slats underneath. So then we just need to add in that center beam and there's a cut one. I think I cut this one a little short. Oh yeah, I did. So I will cut a new runner for underneath. But basically, that is it. Actually, I can glue it back just a bit shorter because I will need to add in these little cross beams underneath. And this cross beam that's going to be on the ends should cover that this is a bit shorter. So here I've got this really ancient sheet of balsa wood. This is something that my dad and I had when we were building model airplanes way back in the 1980s. But what you see here is this is a 1 16th inch thick by 4 inches wide sheet of balsa wood. Look, I got this from Ambleside Hobbies for $2.75 way, way back, which would probably be about 6 or 7 bucks now. But you may recognize this board. I used this same one for Natie's sign on her tire rack. And I still have that piece of paper glued on here. So what I'm going to do is just take my little, little uh, mathematical tool here. 
and using the measure I'm going to actually cut these a quarter inch thick instead of three sixteenths and that should be wide enough for the three uh, cross braces on the bottom. So I'm going to use the edge of the balsa wood where there's all these little weird bits of whatever got on here and uh, that'll add a little detail onto those under braces. So just with my number 16 hobby blade dragging along the edge of our little ruler there and that will now separate and give us those bottom beams. Here we have our center runner and the three cross braces as well as the pallet turned upside down. So now what we can do is take our center brace here and using that old scrap piece of balsa and some glue we can just as easily run some glue right down the top of the center beam just like so then we're going to eyeball this again but basically glue on that center post or sorry the center runner and uh, just by eyeballing it we can see pretty much where center is. I'm just turning this for me over there. That actually looks about right. <laughs> so just make sure it's parallel to the bottom edges and we'll just move it in a little. Okay. So that's looking good there. And now we are going to take the, the ones from underneath, the cross braces, and much like before, add a little glue there, a little glue along here, and a little glue down here. Okay, now I think I want the little stains that were on that uh, balsa wood to be on the bottom. And again, this is easy to do because we've got our palette all nice and square. So we'll just glue that there. Make sure that center brace is still staying center under there. <laughs> that wouldn't be nice if it ac accidentally... Uh, spun out on us. Okay, so we've got a bit of glue there. A little glue there. Glue there. Okay. Yeah, the little stains on the bottom of the boards make sense because when the pallet is down, that's where it would pick up whatever is on your floor and kind of crush it into the wood or absorb it in the wood if it was like oil or grease or something. So now the center brace, this one is, well, a bit, I wouldn't say trickier, but you have to align this one because the center brace needs to be in the center of the gap of that board. Now we have eight boards on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one has to be in between the gap of the middle board. So I, it's somewhere about here. Okay. Something like this. So here we go with the center one. Oops, now just to make sure, we can turn this over. Yeah, so it should be in between this gap. So should be about there. Whoops. <laughs> uh, 
there for the center and now I've got to slide these end ones or that end one anyway back into position so I can do that with I can also grab the sandpaper block here and just slide this till it hits a sandpaper block because that sandpaper block is on the edge oh okay you stay there <laughs> there it is not to me that center one looks like it got crooked but anyway this is the idea so I will fine-tune this and then we can work on the sides here and here so now the glue on the bottom of these slats are dry and they're pretty solid actually this feels really rigid which is nice now one thing we do need is the little reliefs on the sides here and those act as hand grips so if you're moving the pallet and you need to lift it an empty pallet of course not one fully loaded but if you need to move it uh, there are some reliefs on the sides so you can get your hands underneath it and on the pallet that I've done before you can see the reliefs there cut out little half arches so again that is when it's on the ground you can get your hands up underneath it and lift this thing up and pile it in the corner or something like that so on our pallet here we need those same reliefs so whoops what I have here coming up is our pencil and I'm just going to turn the pallet over so that the uh, top is here and very carefully I'm going to draw a line sort of somewhere like halfway between our board here there we've got two little lines and then I'll just draw a little curve going to the edge of each of these boards almost looks like I got off center here doesn't it oh well so now I've drawn out the reliefs and I will do that on the other side as well but for right now I've got this I don't know if you call it a special knife but this is one of the ones that comes in the with the testers models it's got a nice little cap on there to protect the blade but one thing I found about these blades is that if you see it's sort of got a purple edge on it or a purple black hue sort of thing and look at the regular Excel blade now you can see that that's chrome where this one's a bit almost like a darker color right so what that is is it's actually heat forged and that makes it so that this blade stays sharp for a very long time so basically using some woodworking techniques we can uh, use this blade here to cut down into our reliefs much in the same way that a chisel would do it guess what I don't think this is balsa wood <laughs> but yeah here so like this right so we're cutting or sort of chiseling down and we'll do that until we hit the line and keep going and hollow out these little reliefs and here we have our pallets and the reliefs cut out on both sides now as you can see we have a big pencil mark right in here and there is a trick to remove this that is to grab your sandpaper and just go along here and sand away until the line disappears and all these little board edges here we can also just take that sandpaper and just sand it along a little bit here just to correct the edges out if you want to do that if not if you want to leave them overhanging or underhanging in this case right there that's fine too because remember these things are not perfect they are in fact junk lumber and we'll just try to get rid of the pencil mark here because remember that pencil mark is a bit off scale so you do want to get rid of that and let's just sand this just so that little edge board is done but overall that is our palette so here's another little bit to add some realism when these pallets are being used 
Of course, the pallet jack is going to come in at one of the ends, right? And what happens is these nice boards here, they end up getting a bit bashed along the bottom where the arms of the pallet jack come in. So what you can do is to simulate that, take your knife and just at a careful angle, remove some of the wood here so that now it's got that little worn out edge where the uh, pallet jack is hitting it. So that is how to make this look more used and realistic on the ends. See, now you have, instead of just that nice sharp board going across, you've got the worn out bits from the pallet jack being inserted into the end of the pallet. Now here we have the two pallets that I've built so far. This is the original pallet that I built, you know, as a test before making this video. And here's the one we made in this video. Now the one in this video is just a little bit shorter than the one I made previously by maybe a sixteenth of an inch. But that doesn't really matter because all pallets are just a little bit different. Um, they're not 100% perfect. However, you can see just how square the two are up against each other and end to end. And now with the pallets, I can put stuff on it like these tires or whatever I want to do. And now they start to look like something you would see around your shop. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you how to build that little amazing pallet. And now maybe we can do something like ship this Buick crate motor over to Nady in one of the future videos. Well, that would be quite a thrilling little thing. And as you can see, that looked pretty cool, didn't it? So if you want to know how to make a pallet jack, check out this upcoming video here. Now, as of recording this video, I haven't actually made the pallet jack video yet, but when I do, it will appear here. So don't worry, I'll go back and uh, make sure it's here. But if you want to know how I made a welding cart for Nady, which is on our channel right now, check out this video down here. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking the little icon over here. And until next time, everybody, keep building your little 125th scale garage. And I hope this video helped you in making that wonderful little pa uh, pallet there. And happy model building. We will see you in the next video.